Nimbu Game Farm is owned by Norman Adamy and Henny van der Walt got the chance to visit this wildlife enthusiast. The buffalo we saw yesterday was exceptional. So I would like to, to start with um, why, why the passion for buffalo. Tie that into your upbringing, go back to, is it Brantford? Grunstadt. Grunstadt. Take it through a high school professional career up into the decision to purchase Bolivia's Fontaine. Well, my father was an avid nature lover, wildlife lover, and he instilled in us a deep appreciation for nature and the wildlife. And I grew up as a young boy with my three brothers and my sister and my mother and father and we spent many days, many weeks uh, traveling the various parks of South Africa and Southern Africa and we had the privilege and good fortune to see a lot of Africa and many of the wildlife across uh, Southern Africa. And it was during that time that uh, deep appreciation for wildlife was instilled in me and a deep passion for wildlife. And, you know, we grew up in Kronstadt in the Free State. Um, I went to junior school there until I was nine years old. And then I went to boarding school in Kimberley. And it was during those holidays that we used to travel with my dad, um, who, loved, uh, who loved the wildlife. And that instilled in us a great passion. Obviously, the buffalo was always something that uh, attracted us. Um, it was considered one of the big five and I think just the attitude and uh, the adaptability as a species was something that always uh, was close to my heart and um, I guess I finished high school uh, at Kimberley I then went to the army I, I was inscripted in the army I went joined the infantry did my basic training I'd been awarded an American field scholarship, so I was able to interrupt my army training to go to America, where I did that, uh, I attended a one-year program, and then I returned to South Africa to then uh, continue and complete my army. I then went on to university in Cape Town, did a business science degree, then did an MBA, and then from there, my very first job actually was with SAB. And, uh, my career, my entire working career was with SAB for over 35 years. And I started as a management trainee in 1979 and I ended my career when I retired in 2008 as uh, the CEO and Chairman of SAB. Uh, it, was a, it was a great ride and an exciting time to be in the beer industry and to be with a company as uh, successful as SAB and uh, it was during my time that uh, I was with SAB in 1991 actually my dad passed away we had a small game farm the family had a small game farm when he passed away uh, my sister inherited that farm and uh, I was keen to continue in being involved in wildlife and so I started looking for a farm and the closest farm that I could find that was suitable with the right habitat, with the right environment was yeah, Wildebeersfontein, which is Nyumbu today, uh, close to Beersterkral. And um, this is where we are, started with 800 hectares in those years, in 99, end of 93, 94. In fact, I, a colleague of mine at SAB was a partner. We were 50-50 partners in our venture. It was, it was a what, lifestyle farming venture. We used to crop the common game and capture some common game to uh, generate some income and to cover our expenses. And as time went by, I started to acquire the rare game species. And as early as 94, we acquired some sable or I acquired some sable from Zimbabwe. Uh, I also acquired roan antelope, we acquired buffalo, hippo, rhinos uh, in those early years. 
and uh, you know we had a very we actually had a lot of fun on the farm and uh, had a lot of enjoyment and a lot of satisfaction during those early years and I guess it was when the game industry started to uh, show show a strong strong uh, life that uh, I decided that I was going to become more serious in the industry and I started to expand the farm and uh, acquire more species and um, obviously our breeding approach is very much about uh, identifying and acquiring the best male animal species of the species and doing the same with females then combining three or more different lines to create a wide diversity of genetics in an individual animal and or to deliberately do line breeding with two or more different proven lines and then again to outbreed but either those line bred animals with different lines or to outbreed with the diversified genetically bred animals and that's proven to be successful for us but it is a long-term program it takes many years to do this and uh, that's why I'm very hopeful for this industry because if I look at where the industry is it's very much at the front end of that value added chain and I think we our motto is that we've got to breed our way to success. Obviously, we acquire the, the best genetics we, we are able to, and uh, that's how we've, we've uh, progressed. And because of my particular passion for buffalo, I've gone out of my way to get the very best genetics that I was able to. And uh, I'm fortunate to say that uh, one of the big breakthroughs that we did have was to acquire Tyson. In our next conversation with Norman Adamy. You know, in the early days at Nyumbu, it wasn't that easy to acquire uh, these rare species. Uh, never mind special, magnificent specimens of these species. I'd phone game ranchers like Tillman Luden, who helped me with five heifers. It was very, it, he reluctantly helped me, but he did me a big favor. And it was in 2008, early 2008, I think I was one of the very first game ranchers to actually undertake a study of genetic diversity and DNA analysis of my buffalo. And obviously that same approach was adopted with sable. We started with a Matetsi sable. Uh, I, I'd acquired many different bulls, big bulls over time, and I'd bred up quite a good diversity of, of uh, genetics. In amongst the kudu herds as well, and then over time started to acquire uh, even bigger bulls. And today we have five big bulls over 60 inches. 